These comments from Soros, they are not a leak. They are a message meant for activists to get them into the fight. The president won't. More importantly, he cannot fight unless they do. Do you remember the quote we showed you after the Progressive Conference this summer? Quote, anyone who supports the president can do that by making him do the right thing. Bottom up, top down, inside out. It is up to the activists to give the president a reason to step in, create the chaos. There, there was another meeting involving the Democracy Alliance. Soros was not at this one. So Soros wasn't there, but Soros sent a surrogate, as he did with us. In fact, the exact same surrogate who delivered the um, warning, shall we say, to my staff, George Soros' surrogate, he shows up. But who is he with? This time, he came with uh, Van Jones and Trumpka. So you have the knee breakers of the union and you have the violent communists meeting, meeting with uh, Soros' number two guy. It wasn't a private event. I mean, sorry, it was a private event, so we don't know exactly what they talked about. But let me go back to George Soros and the leaked quote from earlier. He said, quote, he's used to fighting, losing battles, but doesn't like to lose without fighting. Do those guys know how to fight? My guy saw exactly what happens with a George Soros surrogate. That guy was ready to fight. We were issued threats. Gee, you think? Look, they know who Barack Obama is. This, this, this is a ruse where they say, oh, the president's not fighting hard enough. No, I'm sorry, that's not true. Um, they know exactly what's going on. The president has been absent. He didn't move center. He didn't move away. He's just been absent. But Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, she has stayed exactly where she was. After a miserable defeat, she was, uh, um, uh, she was reelected to lead the Democrats. Why? Because you must feed the radicals. It's the same reason I said Obama would not go to the center. He cannot, even if he wanted to, which I don't believe he did. Obama, it is my belief that Obama is begging, begging Soros and the left to push him even further. Barack Obama knows he is on the verge of accomplishing the dreams of his father to end American colonialism and fundamentally transform America. He is surrounded by people whose leader, George Soros, has worked his whole life continuing the dreams from his father to change the world. He, George Soros, thinks he's on the verge of getting that done. He has collapsed economies and entire currencies. They see it as possibly, possibly falling apart. I told you that I believe this show may have accelerated their timetable because we've exposed them. But what if, what if they really do believe that Barack Obama is not the guy to get it done? These guys, this is a violent revolutionary. This guy is a labor union with millions of dollars and also a globalist. This guy, spooky dude. This is why I told you one of my longest standing worries about President Obama was not about the country, not about corruption. It was about his safety and not because of the Tea Party people, but because the minute these radicals, if they actually decide that Barack Obama is not who he says he is, political danger is not his only concern. I ask you again to pray for our secret service Make sure our Secret Service are watching inside and out. Pray for our president. As I see it, there are a million things that could happen. <laughs> That's just one of them. There's a million things that can make the entire world fly apart. China's leaders know this as well as ours. But China is expressing many of those concerns out in the open. Why? Because they're not living in fear, as many of our people are. Chinese see what is happening to the world and they see it as an opportunity. The radical progressives here in America also see it as an opportunity to fundamentally transform America. The only thing that will hold this thing together is you, the people. I showed you earlier this week the Tower of Babel and I told you the story of this and I told you that the king, Nimrod, wanted to make everybody into a brick. Just make everybody into a brick. Make them exactly the same. Well, we're not the same.
But when you put bricks together, you need something, mortar in between, hold it together. What was the mortar that held the tower together, the bricks together? Well, Daniel uh, Lappin, uh, the rabbi that was here, s said in ancient Hebrew that mortar is materialism. I've told you before, we've got to get rid of our materialistic viewpoint and change the mortar. Because if, if stuff is the only thing that's holding us together, and quite honestly it is, do our values, do our principles, does God hold us together anymore? How about our common history? How many people who loved America didn't even know our history two years ago? What's holding us together? Four out of ten Americans now say marriage is outdated and irrelevant. It's almost gone. We've got to change the mortar. If these bricks start flying apart because we lose our materialism, our clothes, our job, our food, if we're focused on the mortar of materialism and that falls apart, we will beg for a strong man to hold it all together. You've got to get involved and prepare. I will show you number one problem coming and its solution. Next. All right. This show is, is uh, this one is, it's not for the faint of heart. It's time to take your head out of the sand and prepare for what is coming. Now, I hope that I am wrong, but I'm asking you to use some common sense here. The price of raw materials like cotton and corn are on the rise, and I mean dramatic rise. Cotton is the highest in 140 years, is it not? Highest price ever traded, Glenn. Ever traded, okay. Companies can no longer afford to eat the rising costs, so they're gonna be passed on to you. If you think, well, I just won't eat corn again. Oh, problem with that one. Everything is connected. For example, the typical grocery store. Let me ask you guys, how many, how, how many products are in the grocery store that are connected to corn? Do you think? Give me a number, anybody. 500, 500, 1,000. 4,000 products. 4,000 products have corn ingredients on the label. Now this is Eric Bowling. He is the uh, host of Follow the Money, which Thank you, Glenn. is on the Fox Business uh, yes, sir. Network. How are you? I'm great. Okay. Um, things are going up. You and I talked about uh, this, I think it was Monday morning. I came, <laughs> I came in. We, it, at Fox, we have really intense conversations at times in the hallway. You'll be passing, you go, wait a minute. Or oil and corn going through the roof, right? People are going to be starving to death. Bad, bad. <laughs> People are like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be bad. So I asked you to put together and explain exactly what's going up and why. Sure. sure. Vil Vilsack said the corn thing, this is all just, uh, what did he say? It's all just uh, speculators. So it's not going to really, it's not going to worry, you're not going to worry about it. And they'll, the government will tell you, people will tell you that we don't even have inflation. The, the yeah. reason for that is because the government puts out an inflation number that removes food and energy. How convenient, right? Yeah. Because the only two things we really use every day, food, food and, and energy. energy. So okay. you remove that and, and things don't look bad. Add them in, bad. He says, um, I'm sure that commodity prices necessarily translate, I'm not sure that they necessarily translate directly and proportionally into food costs. Can, let me show corn. Um, they go up and down all the time. Show the, show the commodity index for corn and what has happened here. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> that is gigantic. Can you show, can you show cotton? Now all cotton- time high. All time. all time high. Cotton was huge here. Do we know anything? Did cotton, were, were prices up in 1995 there was a cotton a, a bit of a cotton shortage people uh, that would be called a, a panic uh, for cotton prices they spiked however when that happened guess what price oil was per barrel in 1995 throw what? a number out there 1995 i bet it was like 40 dollars 30 dollars try 15 bucks a barrel 15 dollars so a cotton spike didn't feel like a brand new cotton spike right now with an 82 dollar barrel of oil and all the other prices going up. Okay, so um, how many people here have? How many people here do believe that inflation is not happening? <laughs> you go shopping, right? Yes. Have you noticed the price increase? Has has you have you noticed anything that you've gone holy cow yet when you're in there? Anybody going to give an example? Laura, I see you. Sh Milk. She, what'd you say? Milk. Milk. Milk uh, was running two ninety nine maybe a month two ago. My husband saw up to three ninety nine this week. Sure. Three ninety nine a gallon. Glenn milk up about a dollar a gallon in, in, in the last year. 
A lot of things are made from milk. A lot of cheeses, milk prices going up affect a okay. lot of other things. I want to just I want to just go on on this. Let's just look at corn, because if we have corn, and may I play something? This is from me long time ago um, when we started when we were debating ethanol. Watch what I said when we were debating ethanol. This is like I don't know four years ago, three four years ago. What's the cause of this? Well, it's something we've told you about for a long time. We are burning our food supply. Ethanol made of corn. And I talked there, I said, if God forbid anything happens, yeah. we'll be screwed. Right. Uh, one, clear one third of all corn production is used to produce ethanol right now. And if that were to go up, that puts more of a pressure on corn. Okay. But corn, what you don't understand is corn not only affects anything that corn syrup, um, not only affects corn syrup, but it also affects the price of meat because we feed our pigs, our chickens, our cows, corn. About 40% of what the, the, the corn, the bushel of corn goes to feeding our livestock. Perfect. Oh, by the way, pick up almost any product in the supermarket, the 4,000, and you'll notice high fructose corn syrup. That's, what, that's where the, you take the corn, they and pull the kernels off, they, they mash it, the, and they make the syrup out of that. Everything's the, sweet. The two things that really concern me are oil and corn. You're right. Because Go oil and corn, you have, you have India and China, these new nations that are now coming online, and they're saying, oh, they're going to be great, and they're going to, you know, the emerging world, they need more rice. They need, they need more of everything. I saw, uh, I don't know if it was in the Wall Street Journal about um, uh, energy in China. They have doubled, what is it, their coal production in like three years? Not only that, they've now uh, surpassed the United States in energy usage per capita. We were, not per capita, I'm sorry, total energy usage. They're on their way to per capita, Glenn, because they did it, they're doing it so quickly. They're rapidly increasing. They have a okay. food problem, they have an energy problem, but they're solving it, solving it better than we are. Okay, so um, you have, if you take out energy it's mm. not just gasoline I, I have a friend who's John Huntsman he has the big chemical plant he told me he said Glenn you use oil in the in the tablets that you take for medicine sure. you use oil in everything look at it this way the the cotton at, at an all time high you say jeans uh, wool, the coats so, so you say what about wool well wool prices have gone up too you so you say how about polyester energy it's oil oil it's yeah. almost all oil. okay so here's the thing, America, I, I just want you to think of this. The, the, the world is changing. The world is changing. And you can listen to yourself in the grocery store or you can listen to the people in Washington. Now, maybe they're right. Maybe in the end, this all goes away and this is just a little spike. Maybe they're right. But we're talking about the future of our country and we're talking about our children. So now what do you do about it? Not, not the big Wall Street investors. I'm gonna tell you how to invest your money. What do you do about it? Real life. Next.